let's talk about how to incorporate these changes into our code. So hopefully you already have several of your variables defined. So I have at least 10. I added some extra beats, so this was optional. If you don't have it, then don't worry. Just a few of you might have it. It's a great extra thing if you want to add that in, um, but not required. Then you have two functions, hopefully, or at least the start of two functions. So I've got my intro, and I have one that I liked as a chorus. I don't have a verse yet, so I'll need to keep adding to my song. And then I might want to add in some kind of an outro or some kind of a bridge transition. You can have as many functions as you want, but even with working with just two, let's see how we can add in our parameters. I'm going to start right here with my intro. I have it defined, but I don't have a start and end yet. So I'm going to add in, these are called parameters, my start and my end. So this is the measure I'm going to start, and this is the measure I'm going to end. Now when everything is the same, then it works great. So you see I have a 1 and a 9, but then I have a 3 and a 9. I have 1 and a 9 again. So for my 1 and my 9, I'm going to put start, and I'm going to put end. And if I'm always ending on measure 9, then I can change all of the 9s to end. But we can see that I don't always start at the same place. When I, if I started at a 1, which I do right here, I can make this a start. But what do I do about the 3 or the 5? They don't start at 1. But what I'm going to do is just a little bit of math. So if I wanted to start at measure 3, that's start plus 2. So think of start as the number 1. And what math do I need to do to get to the number 3? So that would be start plus 2. If I do start plus 2, that would give me 3. How will I get a 5? Well, that will be a start plus 4. So I'm going to change this to start plus 4. And then how do I get my 3? Well, that's going to be my start plus 2 again. I can take this and just do a kind of a copy and paste. And then this one is 4, so I'm going to do a start plus 3. So you can still use your start and end, and sometimes you just have to do a little bit of math in there so you can have it start exactly on the measure that you want. And for me, they all ended on measure 9, so I'm good. If I had something end later, so I'm going to come here to my course, and this, um, see, I think I had a, this last go hard. I needed it to go longer, so I might want it to end at 19 instead of 17. And I have some of these others ending at a different place as well. So we're just going to take that into account. I'm going to come in here to my course. I'm going to do start and end again, and all my starts will be 9. So if I have a 9, I'm just going to put start. And here I don't have a 9, I have a 13. So what math do I need to do to get to a 13? 9 plus 4. So I'm going to put start plus 4. What do I need to do to get to a 14? Well, that would be start plus 5. And what do I need to do to get to a 15? Well, that would be start plus 6. So think of your first number and keep that in mind. So for me, my first number was 9, start was 9, and I just do the math. Now my end is going to be 17, so wherever I have a 17, I can just do an end, and I only have it there twice. So now I'm going to have to do math again. If my first, if my end is 17, what do I need to do to get a 13? Well, that's going to be 17 minus 4, so I'm going to have an end minus 4. Just a little bit of math. How do I get to a 14? If I start with 19, no, I started with 17. So if I, how do I go from 17 to 14? We'll have to subtract 3. So n minus 3. How do I go to a 19? Well, I'm going to have to add 2. Oops, I didn't take away the 14. There we go. So you're just going to do a little bit of math with your start and your end, and then keep in mind the numbers I wanted. So for my intro, I wanted to go from 1, comma, to 9. And for my chorus, I was going from 9 comma to 17. So right now it should play just the way it was before and um, you shouldn't notice any differences. So let's give that a try.
it before it ran out of the way, but what you can see is that it's working exactly the same as before I put in the parameters, and that's what we wanted. We didn't want to have any kinds of errors. So I've got everything going, and now what I can do, the power of, the, of using parameters and functions, is that I can recall these. I can call them a second time and not have to, to redo the code at all. So after I have the intro and the chorus each once, I can come to a new line. I'm in my call section right now. You can see intro and chorus. And I can just try calling the intro again and putting in different numbers. The chorus ended at 17, so I'm going to add in 17, and then I want to go 8 measures. So what's 8 measures after 17? So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So it would be measure 24, so we're going to put 25. Now for the next one, once again, we're going to start where we left off, which is 25, and then we're going to go 8 measures, which would be 32, so I'm going to put 33. Okay, let's try running this, let's see if we get any errors. It's a lot longer, so it's going to take more time, but um, other than a little bit of an error, some got, I've got some kind of overlapping, but if it's with my kick beats, I'm not too worried about that. Um, and I can fix that in a little bit later. And what you can see up here in the digital audio workstation is that the intro is here twice and the chorus is there twice. Everything got repeated, but I did not repeat the code, just the call. So let's see what it sounds like now. So I think you get the idea. I need to do some adjusting with my, where there's some overlaps and, and fix my chorus a little bit, but that's what we have time to do right now. So you can um, fix, you know, add in parameters what you have already and then think about it. I think my music would really be added if I had a transition or a bridge in between another verse, you know, that kind of thing. So get what you have working right now and then add some more to it.